at the end of the session we'll declare the session winner and we'll also give the participation certificates so all the delegates are request is to stay back till the end of the session uh, let's welcome the next participant uh, it's a team of uh, ifra fatima and juveria javed presenting the case right atrial myxoma as a cause of pulmonary embolism Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen I am Ifra and this is Duveria we are second year MBBS students from Osmania Medical College uh, we are presenting a case of right atrial myxoma as a cause of pulmonary embolism the patient was Mr L Ramaya he was a 32 year old who resided in Anantapur and he was a tailor by occupation this is his case sheet he presented with the chief complaints of low grade fever since 6 months swelling of both the feet since 2 months shortness of breath since 2 months and dry cough since 1 month uh, history of present illness he was apparently asymptomatic since 6 months back and the fever was continuous low grade and did not have any diurnal variation it was not associated with chills or rigors and there was no history suggestive of uti there was generalized weakness body pains and fatigability So the swelling on both the legs was since 4 months and it gradually progressed up to the knee and initially it was more in the evening with activity improving on lying down it was not associated with any sort of pain or distension of the abdomen and there was no anasarca shortness of breath was since 2 months and it progressed from grade 1 to 2 and worsened to grade 4 since the 7 days and there was no history suggestive of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea and there was no wheeze There was no chest pain, palpitation, syncopal attacks, or hemoptysis. Past chillness. There were no similar complaints in the past. He was not a known case of hypertension, diabetes, rheumatic heart disease, coronary artery disease, or tuberculosis. The personal history: his diet, bowel, bladder movement, and sleep habits were normal. He was not an alcoholic, but he was a smoker of one pack per day for about two and a half years. Family and drug history were insignificant. and on general examination mr ramaya was conscious coherent and cooperative moderately built and nourished no morphonoids features were observed there was no pallor ictus cyanosis or lymphadenopathy although there was clubbing of grade 2 clubbing of grade 2 uh, bilateral pedal edema was seen his vital signs were more or less normal except for the blood pressure which was low and the jvp it was raised 6 cm from the sternal angle and there was prominent v wave and a slow wide descent a cvs inspection the shape of the precordium was normal the apex was seen normally in the fef fifth left intercostal space but parasternal heave was present and pulsations in the right parasternal region and epigastrium were visible on palpation the apex was felt in the left fifth intercostal space in the pulmonary area s2 was palpable and grade 3 parasternal heave was present and epigastric pulsations were palpable no other palpable uh, pulsations thrills or sounds on percussion the second left space was dull and the right border was dull 1 cm lateral to the sternal border on auscultation s1 was normal in the apex s2 was present no s3 s4 mid systolic click or pericardial rub auscultation in the aortic area s1 and s2 were heard no murmurs was heard pulmonary area s2 was split wide and fixed grade 3 ejection systolic murmur was heard in the second left space in the apex soft grade 3 mid diastolic murmur was audible and its intensity increased on inspiration and there was no radiation Blow, blowing grade 3 pan systolic murmur also whose intensity increased on inspiration the other systems respiratory system bilateral basal crepitations were heard git the liver was palpable not tender there was no splenomegaly or free fluid and cns were, was normal so the possibilities of differential diagnosis were atrial septal defect with right ventricular dysfunction pulmonary stenosis with right ventricular dysfunction core pulmonale heart failure idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension or pulmonary thromboembolism the investigation the complete blood picture was normal more or less except for the esr there which was very very high and the ecg uh, the ecg showed prominent p wave which is indicative of right atrial hypertrophy and s1 q3 and inverted t3 which are characteristic of pulmonary thromboembolism the x-ray showed a right ventricular type of apex and it was diffuse 
the CT scan was suggestive of underlying pulmonary hypertension and was suggestive of pulmonary infarct or a thrombus. The serum homocysteine level was also high and the Doppler study of the legs was done and there was no evidence of DVT and the abdominal also showed normal study. And finally, when the eco Doppler study was done in the right atrium, a large heterogeneous mass with focal calcification of about size 7 cm square was found in the right atrium, freely movable, attached to the roof, and the right ventricle was dilated. Uh, so it was diagnosed as a right atrial myxoma, which was causing the pulmonary embolism. Myxomas usually arise in the left atrium and less than 15% in the right atrium. And in right-sided myxomas, clinically evident embolism is uncommon. The treatment suggested was the surgical removal of the tumor, uh, which would prevent the, which was preventing the valvular obstruction, eliminating systemic or pulmonary emboli, and maintaining systolic function. This is the outline of the investigation done for the pulmonary embolism usually. And as a conclusion, the right cardiac myxoma should be considered in the differential diagnosis of pulmonary embolism, particularly in cases presented in conjunction with constitutional symptoms and or, or hematological disturbances. In these patients, echocardiography should be undertaken early to exclude this. Thank you, everyone. This patient is having breathlessness of grade 2 or 3, something like that. So when do you suspect uh, clinically right atrial myxoma? Patient comes with breathlessness. So usually the cardiac, uh, one of the important symptoms is breathlessness. But when do you suspect right atrial myxoma? Clinically. Uh, clinically, uh, the SOB uh, is usually... Um, comes under many situations. That's why it occurs in pulmonary embolism also. No, SOB can occur in so many conditions. In almost uh, all the cardiac conditions, SOB is important uh, symptom. But when do you suspect? It may be correct, it may not be correct. In the JVP, sir, there was a slow... Not virus. JVP, symptoms. In the symptoms. Uh, what is uh, platypnea? Uh, uh, while lying down uh, what is orthopnea what no. is platypnea what is orthopnea orthopnea is uh, SOB at rest yes rest and also uh, while lying down yeah super, super in, in position, position yes. what is platypnea uh, when uh, the person is uh, hmm. uh, get opposite trying to get up like opposite of orthopnea op when standing when or standing. sitting the patient develops breathlessness that is one of the postural variation of symptoms. Okay. When the patient lies down, he will be alright. When he stands up and sits, the myxoma will be moving in the heart. So when the patient stands up, it goes and obstructs the valve. So what are the differential diagnoses? Uh, uh, atrial septal defects and pulmonary stenosis called pulmonary. Uh, no, right atrial myxoma, why it, uh, pulmonary stenosis? Right atrial myxoma commonly mimics which condition? Because it is right sided myxoma. Atrial myxoma. Right sided heart failures. Right sided, which valves are there apart from pulmonary uh, well, valve? Tri uh, tricuspid yeah, good. Regurgi tricuspid. There was tricuspid, tricuspid regurgitation. Tricuspid stenosis or tricuspid regurgitation. It commonly mimics tricuspid stenosis and regurgitation. But it can produce, as you said, uh, pulmonary embolism because of dislodgement of the emboli. Um, How left atrial myxoma presents? Left atrial myxoma is actually associated with pul uh, pulmonary embolism in the usual cases. This is... No, no, no. Left atrial myxoma is not pulmonary embolism. Right atrial myxoma Pluritic is common. pain and... Uh, left atrial myxoma, how, what it mimics is very important, a common uh, condition. Infective endocarditis? No, very common in India. You will see very common. Rheumat huh? Rheumatic. <laughs> mitral stenosis. Oh. It mimics mitral stenosis. Now, what is PND? Uh, you said there is no history of PND. If it is left atrial myxoma, it mimics mitral stenosis. PND will be there. Breathlessness. So, clinically, you can suspect sometimes. Sir. What other features? When do you suspect myxoma? So, it may be mitral stenosis or it may be tricuspid stenosis. 
which are very common but when do you suspect uh, these uh, tumors one is i told already postural variation any other feature and in the jvp sir in there was a slow high descent symptoms. that is very in the symptoms the usually seen uh, pleuritic pain systemic features they have systemic man apart from cardiac manifestations they have other systemic uh, low grade fever like fever loss of appetite loss of weight loss of and weight and involvement of other systems also sometimes so all these are uh, systemic manifestations along with cardiac symptoms why is it not infective endocarditis speaking and the infective endocarditis is the thing which you have to first consider why is it not leave aside all other things i mean basing on the basic investigations and the clinical symptomatology and the profile don't you consider infective endocarditis as a first diagnosis or at least a second one uh, actually what do you do to rule out infective endocarditis here what uh, are the things which are ruling out uh, infective endocarditis uh, basically we use the jones criteria for infective endocarditis he, he didn't have any arthritis and uh, uh, ask of uh, nodules and all that pathology that is associated <laughs> thank you very much any question from the audience